Oh. Hi. Just been catching up on my stories with uh, Miss Caddy Lapone here. And she made a really good observation about reality TV. She said, how come these bozos seem to think that passion alone deserves success? Harsh, I know, but she's a cat. But it is true, because I mean, in musical theatre, if you can't prove yourself at an audition, they're not going to employ you for your passion just because you really, really want it. So when we're starting out, how do we get the skills to get the work? Do we study full time, take short courses, just try to get work and learn on the job? Well, that's what we're comparing today in what we call Miss Caddy Lapone's Categorical Decidery. Her words, not mine. Again, she's a cat. Hi, my name's Scott. You're watching Inside Musicals, the channel for all things musical theatre. Now, for the single threat who just wants to act, the barrier to entry is a little lower than musical theatre, because for the right person in the right role, with a little experience and common sense, most of us could, could bluff it, at least that first time. But for the triple threat, you can't bluff singing and dancing, because an audience can spot a faker. And while we don't have to be perfect at the beginning of the career, we do need those fundamental skills just to get through those first auditions. So let's define what we're comparing today. So full-time study is a university degree. Uh, work is trying to pick up skills on the job. And short courses could be workshops, master classes, drop-in dance classes, singing lessons. And they all have their place, but they all have downsides. And right off the bat, let, uh, Sorry for the sports analogy. Right off the bat, let's eliminate high school drama and amateur theatre, because they're not going to give you industry-ready skills. Cue the comments. Look, they're a good start. They put a fire in the belly, maybe introduce the basics, but they won't count for much in the professional world. High school drama is too narrow in its assessment criteria for musical theatre, and amateur theatre, let's face it, is a breeding ground for bad habits, again comments. The exceptions here could be a performing arts high school or maybe a reputable dance academy with a strong drama and singing program because years of experience across a range of skills could be enough to land that first audition. So 12 categories. Let's get to cidering. She told me to say it. Now the most obvious benefit of university is a qualification. Now that's not going to get you a job, but when you're starting out, if you have no other experience, it might get you an audition or an agent, or at least a conversation with an agent, uh, particularly if it's an industry recognised course. And the advantage of those courses is they often introduce their graduates to agents at the end. Now where I went to drama school, most of the practical subjects were either pass or fail. You either achieved competency in that area or you didn't. So the qualification suggests a well-rounded competency across acting, singing, dancing. Now one exception here is training as a drama teacher, because although there'll be a practical component, chances are it's the focus is on academic understanding and teaching. So it might not carry the same weight as an industry focused qualification. So keep that in mind when you're choosing courses. Now a qualification from a short course might carry some weight if it's an in-demand specialised skill, like stunt work, combat, wire work, maybe fire breathing. And only then if it's necessary for the role you're auditioning for. And quick tip, unless that short course is with a world-renowned specialist, don't mention their name on your resume, because it looks like you're trying to bask in the halo of their glory. But if no one knows who it is, there's no glory, just your desperation to just list it as a skill. So learning on the job is a loser here, because there ain't no qualification. But the winner, full-time study. But nothing gives you industry experience like working in the industry. Um, it's a trial by fire, but you quickly get to learn how auditions work, uh, what's expected at rehearsals, how to deal with egos, divas, directors, how to collaborate with artists. And if your resume shows a progression of roles with professional companies, it shows that you understand what's needed, even if they're just small parts. Now, when I first got an agent, I had no professional experience. So my first jobs were as an extra on feature films. But I got to work with people like Tom Selleck, Sam Neill, Max von Sydow, and watch how they used the camera depending on the setup. I got to learn how the set worked, the protocols, the personnel, the, the hierarchy, uh, that I shouldn't sit in the star's trailer between takes. Yeah, big mistake. You only do that once. So the advantage of a small role is you have time to observe and learn. So don't underestimate starting at the bottom. Sidebar, I was always very attentive on set. So on some of those days, I was bumped up to a featured extra or a small talking part, which doesn't sound like much, but I was paid more 
and they remembered me for future casting sessions. Now, full-time study is more than just classes, because you're also putting on shows, so you do have production experience, which is something short courses can't really give you, because you know a weekend workshop can give you knowledge, but mastering the skill can take time. But back to uni, because you might say, yeah, but it's still just a student production which is true because you know, maybe the, the director, set designer, costume designer, stage manager, all students, but they're going to be overseen by their tutors, heads of department, maybe industry professionals. And this is what marks it different from amateur theatre because you're learning industry best practice. Not that industry always works like that, but they're good skills to learn. But we're talking about experience here. So the winner, work, learning on the job, paws down. See what I did there? Because she's the cat with paws. So sad when you explain a joke. So sad. And my first year at drama school was 42 contact hours per week plus additional rehearsals, preparation. So three or four years can seem like a big time commitment before you see a return on your investment. But if you have a day job or maybe family commitments, you might not be able to spare 42 hours a week. So maybe short courses are the better option because you can do them in a time that suits you. So then you might think maybe working, learning on the job is the streamlined approach. But unless you're a child actor, it's not the director's job or other actor's job to teach you anything. You've got a job to do and you've got a show to put on. And even if they wanted to take you under their wing, there's no guarantee that because they're good at what they do, they're good at teaching it. So if you're learning on the job, it could take you years to pick up the skills you need. And even then there could be gaps in your knowledge. The same with short courses. I mean, how many courses would you have to take for the equivalent of 42 hours a week for three or four years, like full-time study? So for time efficiency, this goes to full-time study. For time convenience, definitely short courses. Now at face value, university can seem expensive and unless you pay it up front, that's a debt you're gonna have to carry. But if you think about how much you cram into that three or four years, I mean, maybe it's money well spent. So when you think about short courses or dropping classes, they look affordable in the short term, but compared to 42 hours a week of full-time study, you'd pay a fortune in short courses. And this is where learning on the job really shines, because you're being paid while you learn, if you learn. So for the lowest cost, definitely goes to work. But for value, full-time study. Now in a full-time musical theatre course, the, the hours and subjects are going to be predetermined. There might be a handful of electives, but there's not a lot of flexibility. Plus, if you're already good at one of those skills, say tap dance, you might find yourself treading water while the rest of your classmates catch up. Now if you're working on a show, the hours are also going to be predetermined and it will determine the kind of skills that you need on that show. And if you don't have those skills, you might not have the time or energy while you're working to train outside of the show. And if you're between jobs, you might not have the money. So short courses have to be the winner for flexibility because you can choose exactly the course you want at the time you want to do it. Now a short course, whether it's an introduction or a deep dive, is going to be specialised, which is great, but then the onus is on you to cover all bases. Now sports analogy. And I don't even play it when I say basketball. And while learning on the job teaches you about the industry and hones the skills you have, unless you're in a show like Cats where they teach you how to move like a cat, there's no guarantee you're going to pick up any new skills. You're so focused on that show, that script, those songs, that choreography, that learning anything outside of that is like completely off base. Again, sports analogy. Damn you sports! Crikey! Now a full-time musical theatre course is designed to be comprehensive. Acting classes, singing lessons, group singing, uh, maybe traditions and, and conventions of musical theatre, different styles of dance, even how to audition. So for comprehensivity, is that a word? Completeness full-time study. Now in the industry, rehearsal periods are getting shorter, expectations are higher, it's more competitive than ever, and you have to deliver goods every time. And your livelihood, quite literally, is on the line at every audition and every performance. It's a lot of pressure. But full-time study is part pressure, part support. I know in my course, uh, they made it clear that they could invite you to leave if you went up to scratch, because of course it's their reputation on the line. But it's also a relatively protected environment where you're expected to take risks that might not always pay off, as long as you learn from them. In a short course though, they don't really care if you pass or fail as long as you pay the fee. So I think the unexpected winner here is full-time study, because there's enough expectation to drive you, but failure is not going to destroy a career. 
Now, early in my career, I was given some advice, which was always work with people who are better than you because you'll have to lift your game. Very good advice, but easier said than done when you're starting out because you don't always have a lot of choice. Uh, you might start out in small, crappy roles in student films where no one knows anything more than you do, or like me, in a costume in a shopping mall where the best thing you're going to learn is humility. Not a bad skill to learn, by the way. So when it comes to courses, the quality is really determined by the content and who's delivering it. So you need to do your research. Before I even auditioned for, for WAPA, I flew over there for a week to check it out because you know three years is a big time commitment and it's on the other side of the country to where I grew up. So it was their production week, uh, so I got to see a number of their shows, speak to students, tutors, heads of department. And I remember my first impression was it was like the fame school in that TV series. There was someone in the foyer tuning their cellos and dancers stretching and some greasy head guy learning a monologue. And there was something about their focus and immersion. I thought, yeah, that, that's for me. So there's no clear winner here for quality, but I think for breadth of content, it has to go to full-time study because the content has been vetted and accredited. Who, who was it that said, the world needs more actors. Oh, that's right, no one, ever. It's highly competitive out there. You're constantly competing for work. There are more actors than there are jobs. And if you have no experience, you might struggle to land that first audition, let alone a job, let alone build a career. And for top university courses in Australia, places like NIDA, Vic College of the Arts, WAPA, entries by audition. Uh, I know in, in my year, they took 18 students from across Australasia. When I did post-grad work in composing music for the screen, they took four. So highly competitive, and you'll usually need some experience just to get in. But for dropping classes, you pay the fee, no questions asked. So for accessibility, this definitely goes to short courses. Now the funny thing about knowledge is we don't know what we don't know. So left to our own devices, there's no guarantee we're going to learn it. This is where we need an outside eye, some personalised feedback. And whether that's a director, our cast mates, an audience or a tutor, things like widen the larynx, don't pop the shoulder, or slap his face like a horse's ass. Now that's actually a true story. I should tell some of these stories one day. And there's a wealth of brilliant online content these days. I mean like this channel, subscribe. But unless they give you personalised feedback, you might find that you gain knowledge but not necessarily skill, because practical skills come from doing and refining, not multiple choice questions. So a one-on-one -on -one singing lesson, perfect. Full-time study, you betcha. Short courses, depends on the course and how it's run and the size of the class. Uh, working on the job, mm, variable. Let's say you're in a show, let's say you're in the ensemble. You might never get personalised feedback from the director. And maybe the musical director, maybe the choreographer. But the lower you are on the cast list, the less time they can spend with you. So to build on what I said earlier, the, the lower your responsibility, the more you can observe, but maybe at the expense of personal guidance. So I think the winner here has to be full-time study because you're under constant scrutiny and they get to know you. And then it's probably short courses, particularly if it's one-on-one -on -one lessons. Now, if you're working a day job and doing a short course at night, you have a split focus, so you might find it hard to gain momentum in that skill unless you somehow reinforce it every day. I mean, think of how quickly people develop in a show like The Voice. They have a singular focus, total immersion, access to mentors, and a vision for what professional performance looks like, so they evolve very rapidly. So you might think, well, working in the industry would be ideal, but as a professional actor, a working actor, Unless you have back-to-back -back jobs, there's going to be downtime. So you're going to be spending a lot of time just trying to get back up to speed. So for momentum in learning, I think full-time study is the winner here. Because you have that continuity, that momentum that you gather over a couple of years. Of course, it could all come to a grinding halt when you graduate. But in the meantime, you can develop rapidly. And the final category, network. And by this, I mean both uh, a support network as well as useful allies and connections that can get you work. And in Australia, musical theatre is not a huge industry. And by that, it's a, I mean it's a fairly intimate, tight-knit community. You only have to do one or two shows and you start to recognise some of the same faces, the actors, directors, producers, publicists. And these are valuable relationships because getting work is more than just your skill. It's also about trust. And in theatre, you have to trust people very quickly because you're working very closely, very intensely. But when you're starting out, you have none of that. So maybe your most valuable resource, your most valuable network, 
are the people you graduate with from a full-time study. You have a shared experience, you're studying your careers together, you know what you're going through, you understand each other's strengths and weaknesses. So maybe if some of you play instruments or can produce, direct, write, your first job might be the show you create for yourselves to showcase your talents. I mean, even now, I still collaborate with some of the people I studied with. So what's the overall winner here? Because short courses can be piecemeal, but if you have some experience, they can fill in the gaps. Learning on the job can give you an instant income, but there's no guarantee the work will give you the skills you need. Full-time study can be expensive, but then maybe it's a fast track to being employable. So what would you choose? Oh, you thought Caddy was gonna choose? No, that's why she gave you all these pros and cons. Plus, she's a cat. But as she always says, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish, and he'll be slave to a cat for the rest of his life. Who wrote? Caddy. So what have I overlooked? What's your advice? Would you like more videos on how to get a career off the ground? Until next time, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it useful. If you didn't find it useful, share it with five other people, just for a second opinion. That'll teach me. And if you're still watching, I truly love you.